Hello and welcome. I'm Ari Lax, and this week, um, for the first time I think since the deck became a thing, I'm recording with Obzon Company. Uh, so recently they introduced a UI fix to Magic Online that lets you yield to all abilities of a card with a given name instead of just a specific instance of that card. So with Kitchen Finks and this uh, the Obzon Company combo where you are uh, looping it in and out of play infinite times. Uh, it's a new object each time, but now because it recognizes by name, uh, you can auto yield to all the persist and gain life triggers, and that significantly reduces the overall load of number of clicks you have to perform. Um, previously, I think I had tried to play this deck and I had hypothesized that I think it was not very reasonable to uh, go through all the clicks for the unoffensive bolster combo. But now it's actually, I think to make like, you know, 50-ish power of creatures is only like four minutes of comboing, which in the scale of things on Magic Online is not that bad. Um, to put that in context of other absurdly long combo decks, eggs, if you went off three games and like fizzled one of the games, you'd often be using like 21 minutes of your round clock comboing. Um, so you know, 18 to 21. So, you know, if your combo, when fully executed with its deck, takes up about 12 minutes of your round time over the course of a match, that's not that bad. Uh, the other change, I think, is uh, Star City switching to the replays lets me actually go through the combo without spending a bunch of time in-game talking about what I'm doing. And that was always something I was concerned about was timing out because I was too busy, you know, talking about previous plays and I didn't have enough time to execute clicks. But... Uh, also, the switch to league structure since this deck first came about. Uh, people are more willing to concede to the combo because it's just them literally wasting time they could play a match. Um, and also this specific list, having Archangel. But we'll get to that in a minute. So this list is very similar to the one that um, I played at Grand Prix Vancouver that fellow Team Mastrop member Eric Severson played to a top 8 finish. Um, it's based off a list that Brad Rutherford had tuned for that event. Um, rather for being one of the original adopters of the Obzon Company deck after Dragon's Dark Heroes released. So to go through the important stuff, um, the format has changed since the Gitaxian Probe ban. Uh, there's a lot less infect. Uh, the format is... It's slower. It's about a turn or half a turn slower than it used to be. Um, and you'll see a lot of, those, a lot of that reflected. Um, and there's also been a drop-off of Affinity is another thing worth noting. Another deck that was previously pushing you to be very fast. Um, there's been a drop-off in Burn, another deck that was forcing you to try and be... Uh, not necessarily fast, but curve-conscious. And I, I don't know if drop-off in Burn, but the deck has gotten significantly worse. You know, these were three decks that when I played this deck at Pro Tour Fate Reforge were at the forefront of everyone's mind, trying to figure out how to beat those three decks. And obviously Eldrazi, but... Not favorite Forge, uh, Oath of the Gatewatch, that one. Eldrazi kind of ruined everything with that, but um, you don't have to be as aggressive as you used to be. So you see that reflected in the mana creatures. You just have Birds and Noble, you don't have Wall. So one of the previous concerns was deploying all of your Court of Callings and Wall of Roots, tapping for a green, and then adding a green, or basically having haste add a green um, was important there, and that's not so huge anymore. Um... You see that in the option of playing Archangel and Feeder. So these cards were previously basically dead draws. And uh, they're just too slow. And now uh, Archangel is actually just a really good card. If you can cast it. And you now do have the time to cast it a lot. And uh, this card just takes over games. It's just like Gavany Township, Life Gain. It just does everything. And it's a combo piece. Um, so that's pretty clutch. So you can afford that. Um, you can afford to play nonsense like Tireless Tracker now, whereas previously you had to spend a bunch of slots on lower-to-the-ground stuff like Spellskite. Um, so your deck is becoming more of a good fair deck, which is one of the reasons we really like the deck. Or at least, you know, I did. Um, let's see what else is going on here with this list. We had multiple Renegade Rallyers before. It's just the best filler card because it's mana and card efficiency and kind of reassembles your combo. Does a little stuff with some sideboarding nonsense like uh, recurring scholars, but it's not amazing. It doesn't actively assemble your combo. Um, it isn't part of your combo. Playing the cards that are good with it, like Voice and Safi, creates more conditional cards in your deck that aren't good unless you have Rallyer plus a Viscerous here. Like you have to assemble all these pieces, and you already have you know 
better versions of those cards that are wasting slots. So I can see playing anywhere between zero and three of this card, just depending on what your list needs. Uh, you know, if Tireless Tracker is bad because there's not enough decks that you need to grind that hard against, you can replace it with a Rallyer. You can replace Sculler with a Rallyer if there's not super combo -y decks. Or you could just cut Rallyer altogether if you need a specific hate card for a weekend. Uh, so I mentioned Tracker. Less generically good than Rallyer, but just a better card when you need to grind, obviously. Uh, Sculler is just kind of a generic uh, combo interactive bullet to get game one that I kind of wanted over the course of the Grand Prix. Also good against random stuff like Tron to try and get them to miss drops. Not insane. Definitely cuttable, but I wanted to try it out. Spellskite's also not required. Um, it's nice to have a protective card in the main deck. I think that protecting against Path is important enough that I'd rather have it than the slightly better card, Selfless Spirit. Um, at Vancouver, we were also concerned about the number of walking ballistas in the room, so we did not move in that direction. Ooze is just a good threat slash a hate card. Great in the deck. Perfect. Um, times you can cut this card, but not right now. Uh, you have multiple Eternal Witness because, one, going Collected Company, Hit Witness, Get Back Company, just breaks certain decks. Um, but also the Cyborg plan. So against, like, Merfolk and stuff, there's a lot of games where you're cyborging in a lot of removal and then recurring that removal with Eternal Witness, Snapcaster Mage style, and beating them that way. Um, and Rallier doesn't really do the same thing. There's not really a cyborg creature you're trying to recur that way. So Witness is actually a more important card. And then a Fiend Hunter. Um, we'll get to this in a second, but we've cut Red Cap from the deck. So you absolutely need a source of interaction. I actually watched Brad Rutherford lose a game and possibly match at the Grand Prix because his opponent assembled Kiki Jiki Resto when he had his own infinite life combo in play. So... His opponent can make infinite things attack, and then he gain more infinite life, but he had a finite number of attackers and no way to break up the combo. So his opponent just eventually drew out of it and won. Or I think it actually may have been the, I can't break that, and I have less cards in deck, so I'm going to deck. Don't remember, but it was not a good situation. So combo pieces, you know, standard Sears, Finks, Malira, Anafenza. Uh, no red cap. So red cap is... A non companyable card, so that's a slot that it takes up. It costs double black, which these are all the minor things. You know, it costs double black, not the greatest thing, a little harder on your mana. But really, what it is is that um, with the drop off of Infect, you no longer have like Red Cap was specifically good against Infect because one, it picked off Infect creatures. That's great. So it was actually a good card to draw. And then two, you would end up in spots where because of the Infect mechanic, if you had Anafenza, you had to combo right then and win the game. You know, Infinite Life didn't do it, and you had Red Cap for those spots. Uh, that doesn't happen as much anymore. Um, there's also less Dark Confidant. Um, not a ton less, but a enough less that you don't need Red Cap. Uh, I, the card just got a lot worse. It's not really necessary. Instead, you get to add, you know, use that slot for Archangel Lathune, that uh, that high cost slot. And Archangel is just a great magic card. Pumps your team, gains life. Not, you know, not really anything. This card is just great. It wins games on its own, even without the combo. Um, and this combo gives you added layering against graveyard hate, which is really nice. Even a spike feeder is not really a magic card. It does a little bit of stuff sometimes. Um, and this combo really gives you another angle of attack and puts an actual good card in your deck. And then the dead card is just a 3-drop creature that costs double green instead of red cap. Standard spells that, you know, do all the good things. Uh, it's worth noting that it's kind of nice that this coincided with a drop-off in Collective Brutality numbers. That was a card that was kind of punishing for you at times, but uh, I think that if that card makes a resurgence, this deck gets a little, a little shakier because... Losing out on all of your instants is a problem. And it may be a sign that if that happens, you have to move back to heavier rallier counts to kind of recoup the card advantage. A couple townships, a couple canopies. We debated three township, but we came to the conclusion that we didn't think that it was uh, good enough for the mana, and it was better to be wrong with two than with three, because if your mana doesn't work, that's really bad. But if you sometimes don't draw a township, that's life. Uh, I think I'd stick to two in the future. Canopy, you can cut one down now that you're trimming on Rallier. 
Um, but that's like a pretty nice interaction is that you can rally back a canopy to draw a card. So that when we had two or three of the list, that's why we had more. Um, I've opted for a second overgrown tomb where Eric had the Razor Verge Thicket because I like playing extra black sources, um, cards like this against Spreading Seas. Just minor insurance as Merfolk starts making a little of a resurgence. Not a lot more to talk about on the mana. Um, for the sideboard, we got a reasonable collection of silver bullets. There's one sync collector for the grindy matchups where the Force Sculler might be uh, better against combo or certain combo decks. Uh, you know, your Pride Mages in the sideboard. There's not like a lot of random enchantments and artifacts you're picking off. There's only like the dedicated decks that you want it against. So that's another swap to the sideboard I'm really happy with. This is just another card that's kind of blankish if you draw it against fair decks. Um, Revoker is good to... Beats a lot of combo decks. You can name like Simeon Spirit Guide and attack their mana. Lotus Bloom similarly. The primary use of this card is as a quarter calling target against Tron decks. You can actually cord for it with their big spell on the stack. So when they go Karn, you're just like, oh, cord for Revoker. I'll name Karn. Good luck. Uh, Pontiff to sweep small decks. Uh, Kataki against Affinity, Selfless Spirit against cards like Anger of the Gods, also just a reasonable card to the sideboard and against mid-range decks. That's a upgrade to Spellskite. Uh, not so much against Obzon because they have Lingering Souls to block the Flyer, but having this Flyer is pretty nice as an attacker as opposed to an 4 Canis against the various Storm decks, also just generically good against a lot of the combo decks. Uh, Tracker is just another fair card. Pass is your best interaction. And then I've actually added another Maelstrom Pulse because it was so good, but Pulse is just a better catch-all than Decay these days. Killing Planeswalker is really nice. Um, killing multiple things with the same name, like against Merfolk, really nice. I was just super happy with the card, and I think two might be a little much. I would never play a third, but I want to try more of this card. Decay is better in specific metagames and you know if the metagame's faster like you have to kill more blighted agents or more instant speed cranial platings but pulse is just better as a catch-all better if the metagame's slower and like i said everything's slowing down a little you get to play a more powerful card that might take out a chandra torture defiance or nahiri great so um yeah i think this deck's really good um i don't think it's like bustedly dominatingly good but I'm excited to get to play more games with it because it's always a blast.